I'm Beth Ann. Would you like to know how to sew the Drunkard's Path block? Or maybe you have my pattern, Lantern Glow. Or maybe you have your own Drunkard Path quilt that you'd like to change the size of. Go ahead and follow along and I'll show you those steps. This is a classic Drunkard's Path block. It's made up of two pieces, the convex side, which is the side with the curve, and the concave side, which is this little inny side right here. A classic Drunkard's Path block has a distinctive leg like this. Typically, the convex side is about um, three quarters of the length, and then the leg is about one quarter of the length of the total block. For my pattern, that's an important feature. You can easily change any Drunkard's Path quilt pattern uh, size by simply changing the size of the block that you purchase and use to cut out your pieces with. My pattern also comes with a paper pattern so that you don't need to do this, but I highly recommend investing in an acrylic pattern like one of these just to make rotary cutting a great deal easier. When you start any pattern, it's going to give you rotary cutting instructions. For example, it might say to cut a strip at four and a half inches high and use your L-shaped template to cut out pieces. However, if you are changing the size of your pattern, you simply need to change the size of your piece. You measure the total length of your piece that you are ready to cut and simply make an adjustment in that way. When using a rotary cutter and a plastic template, I recommend choosing um, a smaller size rotary cutter ruler and pay attention to keeping the angle tight against the inside curve. They are, however, very easy to cut. just like that. Now this is the concave side. Let's go ahead and cut one of the convex sides. Cutting the convex side is just as easy. Press snugly. And there we go. First, find the center of each of your two pieces by doing a light finger press on both sides. Once that's done, we want to sew the right sides together. The first thing we do is flip over the concave side on top. That is the easiest way to sew. And exactly line up this straight line and the raw edge of the curved side. I personally find it easiest to actually weave my pen back and forth to really hold that line still. Next thing we're going to do is pull this leg down and match up the other side. Again, match it up exactly. And I like to weave my pin. This holds it nice and still. The last thing that we do is match up those two finger pressed center points and put a pin in the middle. I personally leave all of this loose. When sewing, I like to sew with the thin blade of a piecing foot that proves a quarter inch. However, you can use a regular quarter inch foot as well. Insert the beginning of your patch directly underneath, keeping the raw edges lined up with the edge of your foot. Begin sewing and do a little back stitch and then you're ready to go. Organize just half of the block at a time by gently tugging on it and scratching the edges into place of the concave side. It is actually very stretchy because it is a cut uh, piece of bias fabric. I just hold those in place and organize the folded pieces of fabric so that they cannot get caught um, in the needle. As you sew, continue to rotate this curve until it simply goes underneath the foot, acting as if it is a straight piece of fabric the whole time. Gently rotating and pivoting with your hands. Once we get to the center, go ahead and stop and repeat that process for the second half, pulling gently and tugging that top concave piece into position. Once it's placed in position and the raw edges are now lined up, continue to smoothly 
twirl and rotate the piece through the machine. And sew straight off the edge. Once opened up, it's now a perfect block, but we can make it even more perfect by squaring it up. Let's go ahead and do that. I like to press my seam allowance away from the center. Now, it's pretty perfect already, and you can probably just use your block as is. I, however, am a huge perfectionist, and I like to use a little square up tool, um, which I manufacture, to really make sure that my blocks are very, very perfect. It has a little inscribed line so that I can be sure that my blocks are exactly the correct finish size. And there we go, a perfect Drunkard's Path block. I hope that you found that tutorial easy and you can now see that it's a perfect quarter circle. Be sure to check your personal Drunkard's Path templates and make sure that they do actually make a perfect quarter circle before committing to using them in your project. Um, sometimes different templates have a slightly off math and that might be a problem for certain um, styles of projects.